Thank you very much. So, uh, first of all, I will definitely exceed the 12 minutes, so I won't finish my presentation. I know that already. Normally, I talk for hours. It's, that's a real problem. So, I, I dive into it. Actually, I'm not only here for Jens, it's nice to say, but actually, I'm also here because I, I like to be here, honestly. Um, so, the people who know Drive now, maybe uh, I get a bit bored in the beginning, but maybe in the end, I catch you. Uh, generally, um, Instead of just presenting that slide, I'm telling you a bit how that actually uh, started. Um, in a nutshell, uh, BMW, about seven years ago, it's changed their strategy, um, uh, put mobility solutions or mobility services into their um, focus. Um, then it took about two or three years until it trickles down into management. So it's not like the board member says anything and then it starts. No, unfortunately not. Um, it's, everything has to be discussed. and. Uh, uh, and then at uh, uh, 2010, actually, um, the strategy department approached, I know there was, a, there was a speech of Mr. Sixth at BMW about how they love BMW. There was a big campaign, and at the end he said, oh, yeah, we're also doing car sharing here. Uh, six, months uh, six weeks later, someone from the strategy department called, and then uh, we all sat together and had a meeting in August 2010 uh, and decided that car sharing might be uh, a case for, for both companies to work together to uh, bring the synergies. Um, at this point of time, I must admit that Car2Go already started in Ulm about a year before. Uh, so we had a bit of a benchmark uh, what's going to happen. And then uh, it took us about four, to three, four months until we had the first cars on the street and about yeah, nearly a year until we, we uh, started up Munich. Um, so um, where did this come from? Obviously, uh, BMW were thinking that... Hmm, Instead of actually following something, they, they, they uh, wanted to drive markets and they, had the, um, uh, they felt the obligation to actually bring something to the market uh, very, in a very early stage uh, to test it out. Uh, and for six, it was actually no brainer because it just extended their uh, business portfolio at this point of time. Um, oh, yeah, that's good. Uh, take that one. So we founded a joint venture uh, between uh, BMW and Sixth um, at, uh, in actually March 2011. Um, at about uh, two uh, funny months with the antitrust agency, and then we were able to start. Um, BMW brought in the cars and the in-car technology. Six brought in back-end solutions, know-how, and me, actually. Um, uh, and then we were a team of, I think, five people. Um, mostly not from Six or BMW, um, and uh, we found a place where we could start off with, and then, yeah, we did this whole thing. Um, before I come to where we're standing now, uh, it's, before I come to how, how we did this successfully, uh, i give you some figures where we're standing today. So last year, we made a revenue about 55 million. Um, actually, when I remember, when I think back of the day when we launched the whole product in Munich, I was not so sure that this is actually going to work. I must admit that beforehand, I did conventional car sharing for Sixth, um, which means that was the, the old-fashioned thing uh, which is still in the market uh, and which still works, but uh, I was not so sure that actually people really move over or that we address uh, people with that new product, the free-floating thing. But uh, I remember we had this launch event and then um, we, we were sitting in the office at the four in the morning and hack in contracts and people and accounts. And then I got out in the morning and then I saw the first guys driving and it wasn't our subcontractor. Um, so uh, that showed me that, okay, that might actually work. And it did somehow. So uh, for the first um, two or three years, we, we were a bit struggling to find the right, uh, to write, um, yeah, I would say, the right things to do for the customers, also looking from the customer side. Um, but uh, then in, after 18 months, we got uh, Berlin profitable. After 24 months, Munich profitable, and then the other cities. And then there was enough trust, actually, by the shareholders to give us more money uh, to actually extend to other cities. Nowadays, we're in 10. We just launched uh, Brussels. Uh, Milan will be our 11th city in October. And um, we're having, we're doing, last year we did something around 6 million trips. Uh, so around, and only in Germany, half a million uh, per month. Uh, have around 120 people in, in our organization and uh, around 650,000 customers serving them with around 4,500 cars. Um, these are the cities. I'm short on time. Um, so, <laughs> what, do we, what did we do right, maybe? I don't know, actually. I think it was a lot of luck. Uh, um, lots to do with that we have strong partners in the background and that we could actually... Uh, benefit from the brand awareness, but these are the things which we think um, we did somehow right. So the first thing was vision, obviously. When we started, the first thing we, we did, we said, okay, where, where we, we want to be in 2020. So that was actually, we want to be Europe, we want to extend above Europe, 
Um, we want to um, have 1 million customer, customers by 2020. We're actually on a good way with this. And this is actually very important also, again, for trust. Because if you have a vision, you also get people who are kind-minded and who are actually willing to work for low money, um, although they are working in a setup which is actually BMW and 6 at the end of the day, uh, which sometimes is a bit difficult in recruiting to explain that we're not able to pay the salaries of our mother companies or parent companies. Um, the other thing, obviously, is this, this premium approach. Um, one is from the car. The other one is also from the backend technology and the, the innovational part. Uh, we always saw ourselves as the innovation leader. Um, or maybe we come into the, this in the, in the other round, but we are lacking a bit of the innovation spirit at the moment, but we are, we are getting there again. Um, but there may be uh, some question about this later. The other thing is um, it, it was driven by, the, by above. So it means that without the support of the sixth family and uh, the board of BMW wouldn't have made it, especially on the IT side. If you're looking at a, I don't know who have ever dealt with corporates as, as large as BMW, but this is definitely a problem because they had to bypass the whole development process of the company. Um, and they didn't always make friends, uh, still have some enemies there, not myself, but uh, at least the guys we are working with at BMW, but they made it um, uh, also because there was commitment from, from above, as I said. Another thing, obviously between August, where we sit together the first time, and January 2011, um, where we had the first cars on the street, and then June 2011, there was not much, not much time. And we actually started from the scratch. So at the sixth side, we developed the back end completely from the scratch. Um, we had some experience from conventional car sharing, but um, uh, that the business model, was, business model was a bit different. Uh, on the BMW side, as I said, they bypassed development. The first thing they put in the car was actually smartphones with touch screens. Funny thing was um, they never, they never uh, tested them in summer. Uh, and it turned out actually that they're getting very, when they get very hot, the touchscreen doesn't work anymore. Um, kind of an experience. It goes back to my 80-20 rule, actually, um, because we were actually, we were it was clear to us that we wouldn't solve everything until the start. And we said, okay, if you got 80% 80, 80 done, um, then uh, it's okay that we can actually launch a product. I think we got 60% done, and then we, launch, we still launched because we're running out of time. And actually, today, we're doing it differently, which makes us slower. Um, but uh, I always wonder why people are still using us after the, all the experience I've made myself as a customer. Um, but it seems that they have forgiven us a lot of our um, yeah, sh child mistakes, I would call it. Um, then autonomy, very important uh, because um, everybody thinks it's like BMW and Six is interfering a lot. Actually, they don't. Um, but it took, it took us a while to get them out um, of the doors. Um, again, it has to do with trust because in, in, the, in the first place, everybody's sitting above you and saying, what are you doing there? Are you going the right direction? And to give me numbers, numbers, numbers. And we always say, yeah, yeah, okay, you get numbers. Yes. Look at the numbers. And, um, <laughs> and we, um, we actually established, uh, we have, we, first of all, we have a very good personal relationship in our, in our um, board. So it's me and my, my colleague, uh, Sebastian. Um, and since the company is run 50-50, we split up in marketing and finance and business development and operation, which is on my part. Um, and sometimes it's good, it's good to work together to play them against each other, um, just to keep them out of the decision-making process sometimes. The other thing, uh, this, is, this is one of the reasons why we were uh, profitable, in my opinion, is um, obviously we didn't have to set up all the processes again or anew. Sixt has done this for 100 years. They know how to handle damages. They know how to handle repairs. Um, uh, we, have, we obviously buy a lot of services from our parent companies and from Six we buy a lot of these services because we said we don't need to do that ourselves. Uh, so wherever you can buy it, don't make it uh, in your product. Um, whereas this is a very complex product, but at the end of the day, uh, this leads to a very um, small number of people which we're using um, and uh, transaction-based transaction -based services, which makes it far easier also from the, uh, from the finance side to actually start something like this. Other thing, customer centricity. Um, obviously, in the first place, we had, a, we had a website like a blog, and then you could actually put in your ideas, and other people could actually rate it. Uh, and that was exploding in the beginning. People had so many ideas, mostly about the business area, because that's always a big topic, um, but also some very, very good ideas in terms of product. And the good part was that for the first six months, we didn't have any IT budget, and we had more or less unlimited resources. So we were playing around with a lot of things. Uh, about 80% is not existing anymore, it didn't work out, but at least the 20 we did um, were okay. 
Um, bit in direction of the 8020 uh, 80 part, we tested a lot of things. So what you see here is actually the first booking end process uh, we've done. And for some reason, we launched the product and we all, all of us knew this. But for some reason, we never realized that actually the customer has to say end booking twice. And the customer obviously didn't understand this because the, he said booking and booking and then he left the car and then he closed it. And then the, 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 um, the rental was still running. So they called the call center and say, ah, oh, the rent is still running, I paid so much money, blah, blah. And we're like, okay, then we have to change this. And this again um, helped us then, uh, the, the, the six months without budget helped us to actually uh, come by these things in a very, uh, very fast way um, and make it, change it um, very fast so that the, the effects were not, were not that, um, that big at the end of the day. And then, uh, as I said, numbers, numbers, numbers. It's about tracking and reporting. Our, we had a very good finance guy. Actually, Sebastian was our CFO when we started. So he set up the, the whole tracking and reporting part. And uh, it was, first of all, very good for the shareholders because they had transparency in numbers. Um, and it was actually also good for ourselves because we also knew what didn't work very well and what did work. Um, and um, we are customer-centric, but we also have the, um, the approach that we actually want to make money with this. Um, so at the end of the day, um, this helped us to run this successfully. So, I got 30 seconds. Sorry for making that so fast. You can ask any question now, you can, or whatever. Um, there's more to it, definitely. Uh, but I think in a nutshell, that was it.